Here's the report we asked the dean of the college to send. Why, it's the third time you've told me who it's from. I want to know what he said. Read it. In answer to your inquiry concerning the scholastic standing of Ronald Chadburn and Philip Mason, I wish to state that they were average students. Although I would say that Mr. Chadburn is the more brilliant of the two. Let me see that letter. Mr. Chadburn and Let Mr. Mason... Let me Ma see that letter. Hmm. Just as I thought. You made up that about Mr. Chadburn being the more brilliant. I'll read the rest of it. Mr. Chadburn and Mr. Mason rank approximately midway in their class of 300 members. They are both thorough gentlemen and representative students. However, it is my personal thought that both could have stood high if they had applied themselves more closely. But as neither one is a student in the strictest sense of the word, I believe they have received all the benefits of the courses they studied. Now, Curtis, are you satisfied that I am right? No. I think you've done the boy the greatest possible injustice. Explain that, Curtis. He should have been taught a trade. What awful use of college letters to anyone raised in the atmosphere of a machine shop? Well, there's no rope tied around his neck to keep him there, you know. Well, what else can he do? You won't keep him. Here's the world is glutted with college men who can't find employment. I suppose that won't include your son, Ronald, will it? No, John. Ronald wasn't sent to college for commercial reasons. He was sent to acquire culture. You seem to forget what that same veneer did to our brother Richard. He'd be alive today if his culture hadn't reached a point where the polish became wormwood. Richard was a weakling. That's because he had nothing but time and pleasure on his hands and mind. Hard work wouldn't have permitted him to be weak, to be lazy. There's not a lazy drop of blood in Ronald's veins. Come in. Boy, what a mess. Say, you'll have to stay here four more years to pack this stuff. <laughs> it's all right with me. It took me four years to collect it. You know, Phil, it's going to seem sort of strange to leave this place for good. Yeah, I've been thinking about that too, Ron. Now that the exams and warrior are all over, you've worked pretty hard to get through, haven't you? You mean tending furnaces and delivering laundry? Yes. It was worth it, though. Tomorrow I get on that old train with my diploma and 22 bucks. The rewards of sifting ashes and sorting dirty collars. Oh, say, how much do I owe you? 160, Ron. You know, they charge double for those two shirts of yours. How come? Ink stains. Seems you inscribed various telephone numbers on the cuffs. Numbers belonging to the local fair sex. Hey, that's my girl's telephone <laughs> number. <laughs> well, you ever hear of a pot calling the kettle black? All's fair and love in the laundry business. <laughs> Wait a minute, Phil. Why don't you drive on home with me? The family gave me a brand new roadster for a graduation present. Oh, I'd like to, Ron, but things aren't the same. We're just out of college, and you know how they are back home. Oh, bug. Nonsense. Class distinction went out the window with the last administration. How soon can you be ready? Ready? Say, it'll only take me two minutes to pack that suit. Well, step on it. See you on the campus. Okay. Time, Tom. Philip will be with us this time tomorrow. Hmm? Oh. I was just reading the names of the graduating class. Our Phil and Ronald Chadburn are the only two boys from Garrison. Now, think of that. The son of a millionaire and the son of a machinist. Boss machinist, Mother. And Phil isn't really our boy, you know. We've taken care of him over 20 years. He's just as much our son as love could make him. Heavens above, Tom Mason, look out that window. What is it, Mother? Well, here's where I leave the bandwagon. How come? Tomorrow I'm a job hunter. The fun's over. Thanks for the lift, Ronnie. Okay, Phil, I'll be seeing you. Come on, my lift, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Billy boy, I'm proud of you. Thanks, Mother. Welcome home, son. This is a day we've waited a long time for. Oh, you'd think I'd perform the miracle. Think of the thousands of others who graduated yesterday. <laughs> okay, where's Rose? I'll bet she's baking a cake. <laughs> You're right, son. <laughs> oh, Rose. Hello, Rose. Bill Mason, you almost scared me to death. And I'll bet you ruined that cake. Now, I want it especially nice. Who for? You know perfectly well who for. <laughs> Just look at the flower on your coat. Well, it's your own fault. You shouldn't hug me like that. I'm not a little girl anymore. Say, you're right. You've grown since the Christmas holiday. Oh, silly. <laughs> I don't mean that I'm still growing. I'm a woman now and almost as old as you are. But you still seem to think I'm in pigtails. <laughs> now, go on here with Mother and Dad. I'll be there in a minute. All right. And Phil. Tell them all about everything. They're so proud of you. And I am, too. Hello, Higgins. How's the Prince of Butler? Welcome home, Mr. Ronald. You're looking very splendid, if I must say so, sir. You may. Ronald, darling! Mother, you look just as young and beautiful as ever. Oh, Clatterer. <laughs> you certainly must have won some fine marks in diplomacy. No, but I did rate high on appreciation of the class. <laughs> Where's Dad? In the library with your Uncle John. They're waiting for you. But let me have a look at you. You need tidying up a bit. You know you have a very dirty face for a college graduate. Okay, but even the educated deal in dirt sometimes, Mother. <laughs> I tell you, Curtis, I won't stand for your constant neglect of business. I'm tired of your constant bickering and criticisms. <coughs> Hello, Dad. Son, don't you two ever get tired of arguing? I bet you've been at it ever since the last time I was home, when Uncle John got mad because you went to the horse show instead of attending a director's meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald, my boy, it's good to see you home again. Well, it's good to be home again, too. Surrounded by all the great Chadburns. How are you, Uncle John? Fine, fine, and uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. I was lucky to get through. And in more ways than one. I mean the new roadster you gave me. I've never seen a better one. Oh, I'm so glad to hear you say that, dear. You know, your father had the first model ever imported to this country. And we thought it would be, well, traditional if you carried on. Uh, did you see much of Philip Mason while at college? Yes, in fact, I drove him home with me today. Oh, uh... Well, they're close friends, then. No, you see, Phil had to work his way through school, and he didn't have much time to play around, so I didn't know him very well socially. He'd come up twice a week. Well, that ought to be sufficient time to get to know a man well. Oh, Phil never stayed around. He just came to get the laundry. Well, uh, I must be going. It's getting late. Uh, good evening, Enid. Aren't you staying for dinner, John? Sorry. To see you tomorrow, Curtis. Night, John. Well, young man, we'll be expecting you to learn the steel business now. Come over to the mill soon. Without the traditional roadster. With or without. It's traditional that I get there somehow. Oh, good evening. Here, I'll walk to the door with you, Uncle Oh, John. don't bother. Why is Uncle John so interested in Phil Mason? His interest is merely an abstract one. John believes in the self-made man. He probably wants to see how Mason will turn out. Oh, let's not be so concerned over John's affairs. <laughs> this is Chadburn. Dinner is served. You must be starved. And I've ordered everything you like for dinner, especially for you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here's to the swellest family in the world. The Chadburns. <laughs> Pardon my saying it, sir, but you'd share your pride over your boy tonight. Yes, William. Some people might condemn me for what I've done. Many times I have myself. But the day will come soon when Philip will thank me for letting him know the trials and difficulties of life before he knows and handles its riches and luxuries. 
to the chaplains. You know, sir, sir. Saved this elderberry wine four years just for this occasion. That makes it all the better, Dad. Mmm, from the private cellar of the Chateau à la Maison. <laughs> <laughs> I declare you talk like a regular foreigner. <laughs> here's to success and happiness, Philip. I'm sure you'll have both. And here's to the best family in the world. Courtney's and Cabbage is on, everybody. Mm. It's all right, Dad. <laughs> Glory be. Huh? What's the matter, Mother? I forgot to make up your room. I wasn't expecting you home until tomorrow. <laughs> Sir? Oh, me? No, as the Swede would say, I'm full of whim wigger and vitality. And chocolate cake. <laughs> Just what are you going to do with all that energy? That, and continue my job, honey. Let me help. Here's one. Wanted young man for shipping department. Must also drive truck, keep books, paint signs, and be generally useful in spare time. Uh-uh. That's one of those nothing to do till tomorrow jobs. <laughs> How about this one? Sell our magic stove polish. House to house sales. <laughs> Surefire big profits. You have what every housewife needs. I don't think I exactly approve of that. Oh, you're looking in the wrong column. This should be a good opening. Plain cook wanted for tugboat crew. Must speak English. Well, you're <laughs> making fun of it. But I've got a diploma in my bag upstairs, and it's going to be more than just a dust collector. A whole, a real white collar man, huh? You bet. I've got my prospects listed for the morning. What about your drawing? You won't give that up, will you, Phil? Why not? There's no future in it. I want to be a businessman and make money so we can get out of here and have nice things. Are you ashamed of this place, Phil? Oh, what? Oh, Rose, you know better than that. I'm only an adopted orphan, but you're my people. And you're my girl, aren't you? Oh, that's better. Well, let's hope for the best. Sure, we'll get along, and when we do, we'll get married. Oh, what an optimist. You haven't even got the job yet. Well, I've got the bride, haven't I? Mm -hmm. We'll have a fine house, too, like the Chadburn. No, I prefer white cottages and potted geraniums. Oh, servants and cars. Well, that wouldn't be any fun. I wouldn't have a thing to do with Oh, yes, you would, Rose. You'd have a little fill. You're entirely too fresh, Philip Mason. <laughs> Good night. Thanks. Gentlemen, you needn't polish the chairs any longer. The position has been filled. I thought there might be an opening in your drafting department. The salary is unimportant if I could just make the connection. Your drawings show talent. We like to place college men in our organization. Unfortunately, we are reducing our staff instead of increasing. Good day. You've got a sign up there. It says you need a stock clerk. Oh, that. They forgot to take it down. 
The boss's nephew got the job yesterday. Guess they want to keep the canned goods in the family. Hey, tell me, did you ever go to college? Nick's on that rah-rah stuff. I played billiards, not football. Say, what's your racket, fella? I'm a professional diploma carrier. Yeah? Well, I ain't. But I'm getting 25 slugs a week for counting cans of corn. Use your hands, fella, not your head. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you ain't used to these early hours, are you, son? Sure, earlier than this, when I was tending furnaces in the winter. I just didn't sleep much last night. You will after you've worked in the mill for a while. Why are you taking me up to old John Chadman? Does he personally hire all the men? Oh, oh, you wouldn't expect him to do that. John's an old friend of mine. I want him to meet you now that he's finished college. You remember how Mr. John used to come to our house? You were just a little shaver. I'll never forget it. Everyone was afraid of him, including myself. He's a nice old grouch. Wait, I want you to meet Stan. Stan, this is my boy, Philip, just home from college. Hey, kid. So you are a college here, huh? You shouldn't hang it on here with the bolts and knots. <laughs> <laughs> I won't if I can help it. What kind of a machine is this? This is a milling machine. You see this hunk of iron? Well, I've worked on it for six years and doesn't get any smaller. Hey, <laughs> look, I never get ahead on this job. Is it always as noisy as this in here? You don't mind it when you've been here as long as I have. You get so you can run these machines and think of anything else you want. That's just what I don't want. Dad, how much longer do I have to wait for Chadman? About an hour and a half. Why don't you wander around and enjoy yourself? We'll have a cup of coffee at 9 o'clock. Send them in. Well, Tom, what is it? Mr. Chadburn, this is my adopted son, Philip. He just returned from college. How do you do, Mr. Chadburn? We've met before, son, haven't we? Yes, sir. I know you better than you think I do. Well, what do you mean by that, Phil? Well, Mr. Chadburn's been my inspiration, particularly in going to college. How's that, young man? You made me want things beyond my reach. You impressed me with your, well, power. You sound as though you resented it. 
Oh, no, he didn't mean it that way, sir. It's, it's just that he's a little nervous. What's your ambition now that you're educated? Employment. Your qualifications are satisfactory, but we don't need any help right now. In fact, we're running at almost half force. What did your education fit you for? Wear good clothes, use the right fork, know the latest dance steps. You mean to tell me that you spent four years wasting your time? No, sir, I didn't. But I might just as well have. I studied mechanical designing. I learned to use my brains. But I suppose you have no need for those traits. Other places haven't. No, not at present. And probably never will have. Just because I'm from the working class and must stay there. Isn't that it? Young man, come here. Your kind of talk is dangerous. You see that plant out there? The Chadburn family started it many years ago from scratch. Today we employ close to 2,000 men. We've never gotten where we are through ideas like yours. Work and integrity built this plant. Now, do you want work or do you want to remain what you are, a malcontent? No, I want work. For Tom's sake, I'll have you put on as assistant in the machine shops. Tom will help you with your work at first. If you don't work, you'll be fired. If you do, you'll be advanced, regardless of your class or education. Now you can take it or leave it. When do I start, sir? Right now. Report to the foreman. That's all. And good luck. Thank you, sir. Wait a minute, Tom. Sit down. What do you think of the boy? If you'll excuse me for saying so, sir, I... I think he's a chip off the old block. Oh, it's no use denying blood. But you did a good job, Tom. You made the man of him, not me. Maybe, but I'll never forget the night you brought him to the house. <laughs> he was about so big. And yet even then he knew what he wanted. Yes, sir, and he raised Cain till he got it. <laughs> you know why I gave him the lowest position possible? Well, no, sir, I can't say that I do. I want him to know this steel mill from the bottom up. Because someday he's going to run it, I hope. Here, Tom. He starts today. During the next 12 months, I'm going to advance him through the mill. One year from now, I'm going to make him an executive, if he's worthy. And I'm also going to do he's a Chadburn, my own son. That will be a happy day for me. And a sad one for me, Mr. Chadburn. Just rub me a cold orange over your lips to arouse you, Mr. Ron. I, I use the identical method with your father. It removes the uh, dry taste, you know. <laughs> Year after, you reserve the orange rubbing for Dad. Incidentally, where is the dear parent? He just left for the office, and not in a very good humor, must say so, Mr. Ronald. Your Uncle John sent for him, otherwise he never leaves before noon. I think I'll surprise Uncle John and run over there myself. If Dad hates it, it must be interesting. Your coffee, sir. And you're the executive operation. Now, why do you bother me with these details? Who suddenly lost your stable of racehorses. Why, what do you mean? I knew that would scare you. I mean that business has fallen off to an alarming degree. We're running at a daily loss. Well, what can I do about it? Well, get pleasure and tend to business. Socialite of the family. Go out and get new contracts, new business. I'm running the mill, or I do it myself. Well, it's easier said than done. You can't lose anything but weight by trying. <laughs> Hiya, fella. 
Top of the morning, colleague. Well, don't tell me you're in the steel business, too. Yep, but you'll be the only one who knows it. I'm an assistant assistant in the machine shop. Call up sometime for an appointment. Is that the best they'd give you? Yeah. Say, I'll have to speak to Dad. You should at least be doing office work. Now, don't bother, Ron. Guess you have to be a relative to get out of overalls. What are you doing? I'm going to surprise those same relatives by accepting the job they haven't offered me. Yet. What's the idea? I thought you believed in perpetual leisure. Well, it's a secret, but I've changed my mind ever since a guy tried to wipe my mouth with an orange. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you, Phil. So long. Mr. Ronald Shadburn is outside. Shall I send him in or have him wait in your office? Have him wait. No. Have him in, Miss Peters. I have an idea. Extraordinary. Hmm. Hello, friends of industry. Have I interrupted one of those famous conferences? Your father and I are very busy. What is it you want? Oh, I see we businessmen don't mince our words, so I'll come right to the point. I want a job. You want what? Occupation, employment, labor. In other words, Uncle John, I want to go to work. How about it, Governor? Well, this is a little sudden, Ronald. But it fits in perfectly with the plan I have. What brought on this sudden desire to be useful? Boredom. And candidly, I wanted to see if I was really worth as much as my family tells me I am. And just how much is that? Well, in my own estimation, I'm a pretty good mechanic. Now, and I'll... Ronald, I'll arrange everything. You wait in my office while I talk this over with your Uncle John. Right. I'll start in sharpening pencils and stacking rubber bands. This is most fortunate. I say unfortunate. The steel mill isn't a country club. What do you intend giving your son? What did you give yours? Fifteen a week as Tom's assistant in the machine shop. Well, I'm giving mine ten thousand a year as my assistant in the sales department. Wait, you can't do that. He said he liked mechanics, not business. Oh, yes, I can, John. You put your boy in the working class. I'm keeping mine where he belongs. I guess I ain't as young as I used to be. I'm kind of tuckered out after ten hours a day on my feet. Six days a week. Never mind, Father. Next month you'll get your pension and you'll have nothing to do but eat, sleep, and ride in that car that Philip's going to buy someday. Isn't that right, son? Phil, Mother just spoke to you. Hmm? What is it, Mother? Just talking about that automobile that you're thinking of buying. Thinking is right. A drawing of one is about all I'll ever get on my salary. Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. Take your word for it. I wasn't there. Well, I'm going to turn in. You coming, Mother? Yes, I guess so. Don't stay up too late. Tomorrow ain't Sunday, you know. You shouldn't work under that light, Rose. All right, Mother. I must get this done by morning. Night, Mother. Good night, Good night. Good night. Phil. Phil, why don't you go to bed? It's awfully late. I guess I should, but I can't. You must be tired yourself. What's the idea of all this night work? You know as well as I do. Ronald Chadburn is reorganizing the sales department. How did you happen to become his secretary? Luck. They picked me out of the stenographic department. Gee, Phil, I like him. He's so nice and good looking. Sure he is. He doesn't have to muck around with grease and iron all day. Oh, I'm sorry. I know how you feel, but don't you exaggerate a little? If you clean up and change your clothes, you might feel better. I used to think that, too, the first six months I worked in the mill. But what's the use? Tomorrow I'll only be dirty again. One can't live under these conditions. Starvation wages, 
I've had two pay cuts in the last six months. So is everyone else. Business is bad. Nonsense. It's bad because it's run by incompetence, by relatives of incompetence. You mean Ronald Chadburn? I don't mean his grandmother. Why should he be made an executive? He doesn't know the business any better or as well as I do. The only set of brains in that family belong to John Chadburn. He's too hard-headed to use them. You don't sound like yourself, Phil. Go to bed, please. All right, I will. I don't have to slave all night for any good-looking boss. <laughs> Phil. You act so strange lately. Don't you love me anymore? Sure I do, Rose. It's just... Well, I'd like to wear good clothes and run a mill instead of a machine. Oh, forget it. I love every grease spot on you. And in reply to your letter regarding demand for a cheaper rate on steel couplings number B322, I beg leave to inform you. It's a swell day, isn't it? I beg your pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid my mind's more on spring than steel. Let the letter go. It's just another account we've lost anyway. Yes? Speaking. What? Well, there's nothing we can do about it, Rogers. You'd just better come on home and stop running up expenses. All right. I knew I'd never be a businessman. What's wrong? Our star salesman just lost the Burton auto body contract. Our best account, because he followed my directions. Auto body contract? Yes, they said our work was old-fashioned. Well, I followed the rules in the best books, and they all say when in doubt, reorganize. Well, I did. But what do I do now? Oh, I'm sure I don't know. Well, I do. I'm going to take an aspirin and get tight. What are you going to tell your father? Tell him? He's no businessman. If he were, he wouldn't have put me in this office. I told him I liked mechanics. But oh, no. A Chadburn mustn't get his hands dirty. They design auto bodies here at the plant. Yes, why? I was just thinking. You know Philip Mason? Sure. You're his sister, aren't you? No. Dad adopted him when he was a baby. Oh, poor old Phil, sweating his head off down there in the machine shops. I tried to get Uncle John to give him clerical work. The old tyrant threw me out. I'd swap places with Phil if I could. He hates his job, but I'd like it. I think I know how we could get that auto body contract back. How? By showing them the designs that Phil has drawn. Well, I didn't know he did that kind of work. Are they good? Oh, they're wonderful, marvelous. They're sleek and beautiful and fast looking. He's got his latest design with him right now down the machine shop. Oh, won't you go? Sure. Right away. I'd go to worse places than machine shops when you look at me like that. Hey, right golly, look. The mill must be closing. I come to the end of the aisle. Don't worry, Stan. The end won't come until they finish us. your machine, boy. I don't like the sound of it. Neither do I. I never did. Hello, Phil. How are all the bolts and rivets? It's been nuts. Forget it. I didn't come down here to rub it in. I came to see the automobile body you're designing. Who told you about it? 
Rose, she says it's fate. Is this it? Maybe we can use it, Bill. Well, I don't know about that. Say, that is an automobile. Why, well, that design is positively revolutionary. And that streamlining's practical, too. It cuts down the wind resistance and adds speed. It fits in perfectly with a new theory I've worked out on spring suspension. Say, that's great, Ron. That's one thing I couldn't figure out. This man's been injured. The motor burned out. Take him to the dispensary and get back to work, you guys. Take it easy. Take it easy. Whose motor was it? It was mine. Well, it wasn't his fault, Mike. All of these machines are liable to crack up any day. They're worn out. Shut up. I didn't ask you, did I? Get back to work. How come you didn't check up on that machine? Well, I don't know. I... Well, I know, because you were busy drawing pictures instead of paying attention to your work. It was my fault. I took him away from the machine. I've warned this man before about leaving his machine. You're responsible for this accident. And so are you. You're both going to the head office and face the music. Figures don't lie. Our only salvation is in the renewal of the Burton body contract. Stop that infernal noise and listen to me. The excitement. Ronald is handling the entire affair. Tommy Rot. He couldn't sell ice cream in the tropics. Get him in here and I'll handle this myself. Hello? Yes? Who? Send them in. Well, excuse me, Mr. Chapman, but we've just had an accident. This man here is the cause of it. Accident? What happened? The motor on my machine burned out and hurt the man next to me. It wasn't his fault, Dad. Honestly, it wasn't. I was there when it happened. Why did you bring this man here? Well, sir, it's rumored that you've got a sort of special interest in him. And I thought you ought to know. For months, I've told him to machine. And if he'd been on the job, the man wouldn't have been hurt. Is this true, Mason? Yes. I'm sorry about the accident. But I'm glad the machine blew up. I wish your whole place would blow up so I'd never see it again. You won't. You're fired. Now get out. That's all. You shouldn't have been so hasty, Uncle John. Phil Mason is to blame for this only because you put him where he doesn't belong. He's a mechanical designer, and a good one, too. You mind your business. And that reminds me, did you get the renewal of the Burton body contract? Yes, Ronald. Tell us you succeeded. It's most important we have that renewal. I'm afraid I'll have to tell you I failed. I lost the contract. What? Ronald. I'm sorry, but I don't know anything about business. You wouldn't let me do the work I wanted. Instead, you shoved me into this job, just so you could lord it over Uncle John. Well, I hate it. I tell you, I hate it. I never want to see the inside of an office again. You won't, you ingrate. You're discharged. John. John, I guess I'm an old fool. And I guess I'm an older one, Curtis. Hello. 
Don't tell me I'm to dictate some more letters. No, but I think you'd better do some dictating in other ways. Explain yourself, young woman. Well, it's about the mill hands. You know they're underpaid. That's the battle cry of all labor, isn't it? Perhaps, but... I just left the mills and the men sound ugly. They're planning a strike. Oh, mutiny in the ranks, huh? Just what am I to do about that? Why, well, well, I don't know, but I hate to see trouble. They can't afford to be out of work. You mean we ought to reorganize again? Yes, I think so. All right, I'll be there. All they have to do is fire me again. And Rose, as the capitalist said to the laborer, it's time I had a kid. Just look after the potatoes and see that they don't burn while I'm up there. All right. Morning, Phil. Hello, Phil. Hiya, boys. What's on your mind? Can you spare a few minutes? Sure. Come on in. Mason, we need your help. You've got education and can talk. What about? Well, we're organizing a walkout down the mill. I don't think I'm interested, boy. I don't even work there anymore. No, but you should. That accident wasn't your fault. Everybody knows all those machines are falling apart. Everybody but the Chadburns. There's a lot of things the Chadburns don't know. And one of them is this. That the signal for the walkout will be three blasts on the mill whistle. Listen, Mason. We ain't bad guys. But we can be, we ain't given a chance to live. We want you to talk to the boys. You got a rotten deal. Even worse than the rest of us. Are you with us? Glory be, the potatoes are burning. <laughs> Here they come now. It's up to you, Mason. You tell them. Wait a minute! I guess you men know what we're here for. Yeah. There may be some of you fellows who don't want a strike. We are! This is most serious, John. Who's the ringleader of those fools? I can't see. I think we should call the militia. You idiot. Why, they're hurting nobody but themselves. The sight of a soldier would start a riot. I was going to close the mill this week, but I should have done it sooner. But I hated to throw those poor fellows out of work. If we're wise, we'll reduce wages still further. Increase their hours and boost production. They'll accept anything when they get good and hungry. You forget this is a steel mill, not a slave market. I'd like to stop that radical doing all the shouting out there. It's probably some poor fool who went to school and learned big words. We'll soon find out. Miss Peters, find out who was at the head of the disturbance in the yard. May I come in? Get out of here. Don't shout like that. In a crisis like this, all we Chadburns should stick together. All we Chadburns. 
I never thought of that. I wonder where Philip is. You mean Philip Mason? Yes. Well, he was the reason for my coming here today. What do you mean? Well, Phil has designed a new type of auto body. If we could buy it, we might be able to renew our contract. Buy it? Why, it's ours. What? Ronald, your father's right. It's time that you should know that Philip is... Cameron. Yes? The entire mill has just voted to go on strike. Their leader is the machinist you dismissed, Philip Mason. I don't believe it. What? You were going to tell me something about Phil, Uncle John. What was it? Nothing. How do you feel? Rotten. Phil, why did you do it? Do what? Drink last night. You worried us all so. I had to do something, Rose. Something to make me forget what a darn fool I am. Well, I'm glad you finally know it. You're, you're terrible. Don't rub it in. Is Philip awake, Father? Yes, he left the house a while back. Rose went to find him. He should have his breakfast. I heard him come in last night. He stumbled against something. Was, was he drinking? It ain't his fault. He's just a boy, and a good one, too. He's traveling with the wrong company. I had no business getting mixed up in this strike. Just because I lost my job, I had to go and get everybody else out of work. I'm a great guy. I thought I was fighting for the right cause, but last night I found out differently. The men who really started this are nothing but radicals and roughnecks. Tom, don't you think we ought to tell him who he really is. He's hurting his own father most, and he doesn't know it. Now, Mother, everything will work out for the best. And I think I'll go over to the mill to see Mr. John. He should tell Philip the truth before it's too late. Well, it's his own fault anyway. Oh, I saw Ronald Chagrin last night. Yeah. I knew he was stuck on you. You flatter me. He did nothing but talk about you. That was nice of him. What's the reason for my sudden popularity? He wants you to bring your drawings to the mill. Say, they might buy them. No, not after what happened with old man Chadburn. Try it anyway. Ronald says they could reopen the mill if they get their automobile contract back. Oh, he's just being nice to impress you. Phil Mason, I wish I were a man. I'd, I'd... What would you do? Well, I don't know. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you how much I love you, how much I've always loved you. And I do want to be right, Rose, and make you happy. Oh, I do love you, Phil, but we're not happy, and we could be. I'll go over to the mill. And if I can't sell the plans, I'll try being a mechanic again. Here. Fate's a funny thing, Sarah. A year ago, Philip started to work in the mill. And today is the date his father set to tell him that that same mill is partly his, because he's a Chadburn. To think he's been fighting to close it. His father will probably disown him now. Well, I don't know, but I'm going to find out right away. I almost hope he does. And then we can keep him with us. Oh. Hello, Tom. How are you? Hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. I want to see Mr. Chadburn, please. Nobody's allowed inside. But Mr. Chadburn is an old friend of mine. I've got to get in. Yeah? You should have thought of that before you went on a strike. Now, baby! Listen, what harm can an old man like me do? Please, please let me see him. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, 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 I saw you do that. He threatened me. I've got orders to keep this gate closed and it's staying closed. <laughs> okay, you scab. Okay, we'll take that grin off your face and the guys that hire you. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong up the mill. That's the signal. Come on, boys. Oh, come on, let's go. 
You take care of Tom, and I'll go get the rest of the boys. Okay. Just lay him over there, boys. What happened? Your old man is hurt, and pretty bad, too. Serious, Doctor? I'm afraid so. It looks like a compound fracture. Who did it? I saw the whole thing. Tom tried to enter the mill, and Chadbourne's guard struck him down with a club. Yes, said it was his orders. Orders to strike down an old man, huh? You take care of him, Doctor. I'll be at the hospital later. All right. Right now, I'm going into that mill. Are you with me? Yes! Come on, Come on. Stay where you are. I'll flood the first guy that tries to crush your thing. Go ahead. You haven't got the guts because I'm not old and I'm not alone and I'm not feeble. Come on, boys. What's going on? I want you to wait here until I come out. This is my show, and I'm going to settle it with Chadman alone. When I finish with him, you can do what you want. <laughs> strong-arm hoodlums. Nor does it like agitators and loafers like you. Now get out of here. There are a few things you're going to listen to. I went to college with your nephew. We both had the same education. You made him a big shot and gave me work as a mechanic. You knew I wasn't fitted for it, that I'd studied to get away from just that. Well, it's taught me plenty. I know all the misery a man can get from doing something he hates. I know the bitterness an educated man can feel from being made a laborer. I want to tell you something before you say any more. Shut up. I'll do the talking. You listen. You helped kill ambition and pride in me, but you weren't satisfied. You even wanted to kill my own father. Your father? You mean Tom Mason? Yes. One of your guards struck him down with a leaded club. He may die. If he does... But you don't understand. I'm your father. That's a lie. Oh, listen to me. I had Tom Mason bring you up when your mother died. I don't believe it. Me, a Chadburn. True. Your mother's death faced your entire upbringing upon me. I felt that my business duties would not allow me to give you the care and advice you needed. I sacrificed your companionship to make a real man of you. I wanted to see if you had it in you to come through on your own. You see, your name is here on today's date. I intended to tell you everything today and celebrate our reunion. Instead, you threatened me. Well, I, I've told you anyway. Go now, Phil, and be sure I'll see that Tom has the best of care. Is it true? Am I a Chadman? Yes, it's true, Philip. I've just been telling Ronald. It's all so strange, Phil. I... I can't say anything, except that I'm glad. Thanks, Ron. I'm going out and talk to those men before they tear the mill down. The men are in an ugly mood. What are you going to tell them? I don't know. 
But I do know I don't want to lose a family I've just discovered. You can't go out there. Wait until they're calmer. They're ready for anything now. Then it's just the time to handle them. But I'll go with you. No, you don't know them like I do, Ron. You better stay here. I just talked to John Chadman. I think we can settle our differences without any further violence. There are two sides to every question. And no one can disregard the logic of debate. Closing your ears to reason will close the gates to employment. We don't want work under the wrong conditions, but we do need full dinner pails. And we're not going to get them with any further violence. I wonder why Phil don't come home. I ain't seen him in days. Father, I have a hunch that you'll see a lot of him soon because I don't think we've lost a son after all. Well, what do you mean, sir? Just an old woman's intuition. I think he's going to be our son-in-law. Huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please come in. Take a letter to the Western Railways regarding their new rail contract. Mr. Philip wrote them a week ago. He has already received the new contract. Well, uh, get Mr. Howard of the Apex Construction Company. They're overdue on their notes. Mr. Philip saw them yesterday and he has the payment. Well, uh, send for the construction foreman. I wish new smelter plans. Mr. Ronald has already okayed the plans and building began this morning. Is that all? Yes, yes, uh, you may go. Well, that's it. The next five years, the Burton bodies will be manufactured and designed by the Chadburn plant. Thanks, Mr. Herman. Of all our new contracts, yours means the most to me. You see, I was fired once for losing it. I guess we all went through that in the old depression days. You want lunch with me? Thanks, but I have a heavy date with my secretary. I tried that once, but my wife caught me. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. And good luck. Thanks, I'll need it. Take a letter, Miss Mason. Can't you see this lady's engaged? Ah, but she's still my secretary. Notebook and pencil, please. Ready? Mr. and Mrs. Philip Chadburn, to be. Put that in quotes, brackets, and underline. I wish to extend best wishes from the mechanical engineering department to the designing department upon the coming marriage of the latter department to my secretary. May the new corporation succeed and bring nothing but little Chadburn bodies. Oh, Ronnie. We're leaving right now. Will you come along, Ron? Now, wouldn't that be fun? Being the third party on a honeymoon is like wearing a raincoat and a shower bath. It just isn't done. <laughs> I'll give you both just three minutes to get going. Oh, but I can't. What about my clothes? Oh, we'll buy some along the way. Come on. Hurry, or I'll get the whole plant on your heels. <laughs> Curtis? How is it you stay around the mill so much lately? Well, candidly, I would say for the same reason that you do. What's that? We like to watch our boys carry on. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess there's something to that. You know, that boy of yours is, uh, well, uh, better than I expected. Yours is, uh, well, let's say, above the average, too. <laughs> Well, Curtis, I guess there's only one job left for us now. What's that, John? Let's go and order a couple of good frames. 
We're just about ready to take our places on the wall. 